Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, another competitively oriented Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, this time with a few matches with me playing World Chalice versus Sky Strikers, the pretty much considered best deck of the format, the only thing that comes close to being even considered the best deck alongside it is Goki in the TCG territories that have Summon Sorceress, uh, but basically, this is a deck that I really enjoy, I really enjoy playing this, this is nothing new if you're, uh, if you're not new to the channel, um, like you know just how much that I love this deck uh, and how much theory I pour into it on you know a regular basis, uh, just trying to make it better, trying to make ratios better, trying to make deck lists operate on you know little bits of you know increased performance levels, stuff like that. Basically, this deck abuses Summon Sorceress to hell and back, uh, and even when it doesn't abuse Summon Sorceress, it usually just does some really cool shenanigans involving Ningirsu, just letting you combo into drawing three cards. Um, and then doing things with Gumblar and all that other sort of stuff. So basically, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be playing a couple matches against Sky Strikers. There's actually going to be seven games in this video. There are three matches total that are played because some of the matches were two O's in one of the duelists' favor. So whenever that happens, there's just an extra match tacked on so that it's not just like a four or five game video because I want to keep it to it where there's at least six games worth of sample size in every single one of these videos because a bigger sample size means more data can be pulled from it more conclusions can be drawn in a more reasonable manner all that sort of stuff there's there's never such a thing as too much information if you're trying to find out the different ways that things play out in certain matchups you can always use a bigger sample size but anyway without wasting too much more time here let's just jump straight into the first game and you'll see how these matches played out against Sky Striker with World Chalice alright so going into the first game I lost Rock Paper Scissors but my opponent is playing a striker list that is more built towards going second off the die roll blind second build Sky Strikers is definitely something that we saw quite a bit of around the 200th YCS weekend where people were just playing a lot of hand traps. You can see there's a Psyframe Driver in his hand, so he's playing the Gammas, he's playing Ashes, he's playing Ogres. He's basically playing Ray and then like nine playsets, or not nine playsets, nine hand traps, three separate playsets. So even though I lost Rock, Paper, Scissors, he told me to go first, not really knowing what I'm playing. Even though he knew that I was going to be playing World Chalice for this testing bed, you, if, you're, if you have a good testing partner, like I have a few of those, I have a very, very large quantity of good testing partners at my disposal that won't let their own mental bias skew what we're trying to do, which is trying to get as realistic and reasonable of a result as possible. So even though he knows that I'm playing World Chalice off of the die roll, his deck is built to go second, so he's going to go second to try and make the uh, conclusions that are drawn from the testing bed that we're performing into something that's actually, you know, reflective of what would happen in a tournament experience of him winning the die roll and choosing to go second against someone who might be playing World Chalice. But so, my hand was amazing, by the way. I don't know if you noticed. I opened a Venus combo and I got Soul Charge somewhere along the line. So I'm able to Gumblar for four with a live Trigate with a live Firewall for two with like, oh, oh Jesus, like all this extra stuff. Like I extra linked on the way into the Gumblar so I didn't have to discard four of my own cards. I only had to discard two. Uh, it was just ultimately really, really good for me. That entire turn one is... It's the way you really want this deck to play out, right? You want to be able to get the absolute most out of what you're doing, and when you're extra linking your Gumblar and then using its effect and then soul charging back everything after you turn it all into a Trigate Wizard, it's typically really good for you. But so, next game, he decided to go first after siding because he's siding in a lot of, you know, cards that could be useful going second, uh, going first against me, like Typhoon for the Brilliant Fusion, Shared Ride so he draws cards, um, some actual traps like Solemn Strikes and stuff, but he just bricks, and... That's one of the things that like his deck is built to go um, to go for, uh, second off the die roll. So like there's not that many cards that he has to side out for the cards that uh, for the cards that he brings in for going first, like the mind crushes, the strikes, or anything like that. Whatever he's siding in, so he still has a lot of hand traps in his deck. I think the only hand traps he sided out were the gammas because if you're going first, you're going to be in an ideal world having a Shizuku or a Kakuri on your field when you pass turn. But so all he did was set shared ride and pass with two hand traps in his hand one being Ogre, one being uh, Ash Blossom, and in theory, those could buy him another turn, but I opened Magical Midbreaker Field, which is a card you 100% keep in in this deck when you're going against Striker, going first or second, because it turns off their Widow Anchors, it turns off Solemn Strikes if they put those in, it turns off the Ogres and Hand Traps that they have if you go first, uh, or if they keep those in when you're going second against them, like it's 1000% 
the best card in the deck against the matchup because it just turns off so many cards. And like if you summon Venus and they strike it, uh, like cool, just pay 500 again. Did you enjoy your 1500 burn trap for yourself? Because that's all you really did. So like it's very good to keep Midbreaker Field in against Striker in all those situations. But so that was a 2-0 victory for me. I just killed him through the shared ride with the Midbreaker Field up. I didn't have to worry about anything other than Ash, and I just played around Ash with the hand that I had, so it was pretty easy. Uh, so from here, we're going into the next match. I won Rock, Paper, Scissors, so I get to go first, even though I'm pretty sure my opponent would have chose to let me go first anyway because of all the hand traps that are in his deck in an unsighted game. Uh, but so I opened a Venus play, so it's pretty standard, right? It's pretty straightforward. What you'd expect to see out of this is that you just see things happen off of just, like, just Venus by itself is a Ningirsu draw two and Gumblar for four play. Venus plus any extender makes it even better, obviously. Uh, so like, there's just a lot of things that you're capable of doing with uh, with this deck in terms of putting out boards like this. But so I'm Gumblaring my opponent here. I have the Christian Rosenix that got discarded off of, I think either Lee or maybe I summoned it and tributed it. I can't remember specifically, but I'm able to end on a live firewall for one, Trigate Wizard and the Gumblar play. So. That's completely fine. Now, it's actually super important for you to end on Trigate now more than ever uh, because of the fact that Sky Striker, specifically in the Striker matchup, right, they're playing Shark Cannon now, which is not a card they really played that much previous format. Uh, at least it wasn't super popular. But with the prevalence of the Sky Striker mirror in its pure form now, Shark Cannon is a really good card, and your opponent can just draw face Shark Cannon or uh, draw face Shark Cannon your Link Karibo in response to it using its effect. So you have to have the Trigate Wizard in order to like negate that, or like to negate a Widow Anchor or something your opponent will play from their hand during the standby phase on Gumblar or something. So it's it's one of those things where you just kind of have to prepare for it. But so going into the next game, uh, I believe my opponent chose to go first again. No, I got to go first. Uh, my uh, my opponent lost, and after the first match where they tried to go first. And uh, and see if they uh, if that if that was good against uh, World Chalice again. I guess uh, I guess Bricking scared him, <laughs> but like he got to choose for this one, and he chose to go second in the sided game. So he kept his deck built for uh, going second, and just I just bricked. Like he had a lot of hand traps as well. He had the gammas and the ogres, uh, but like. Um, I just couldn't do anything because I opened Garnet, Brilliant Fusion, and Heralds and stuff. So, like, I opened, like, legitimately one of the worst hands that my deck could produce. Uh, there's not really anything else that could be done <laughs> other than just sitting there and um, and wondering what is life. But, like, at this point, the, the game state got really weird because I ashed his engage. He revealed a Gamma from his hand to negate my Ash because he had no monsters. And then since I had the Herald live, I was like, I might as well just try and Herald this Gamma thinking that it would just make it to where my stuff gets forced through. But so, since he had no other plays anyway, he revealed the second Gamma, which summoned the other driver from his deck, negated my Herald, but because of that, the first Gamma that was negating my Ash couldn't resolve, so his engage was negated, but that was fine because that meant that he had a Cypher and Lord Omega on the field, which he was able to put me on a clock with. So, things to consider. It was a very weird interaction, but going into the next game, I open uh, Venus plus a lot, uh, a lot of plays. Essentially, I open Venus plus uh, World Legacy, World Chalice, and Lee and Guard Dragon. So that's really good for me. Uh, he has Gamma, which what you'll notice is that I Ash Blossomed the Gamma on its first time on my Venus, and that's actually a play that I've been doing ever since like going second Spiral format, where if I summon Venus and my opponent tries to Gamma it, and I have a ha Ash Blossom in hand, I will Ash Blossom the Gamma because then it forces one Venus through to get a Shine Ball out, and then on my second Venus pay. They'll be able to gamma it and destroy it, but then I'll be able to go with that one Shine Ball that I got into Emduk, into Lee, or World Legacy, World Chalice, whatever my extender was, go into an Aurum and revive the Venus. Now, I'm down a Shine Ball off the Venus, but that's usually still fine. You're capable of doing a lot of plays anyway. But So, I actually structured this play around reviving Firewall off Aurum at the end of it, uh, but I forgot that I had used Aurum to revive the Venus. <laughs> so, I got to end on a really weird board here. Uh, but ultimately, I'm still capable of Gumblaring him for two. The Shark Cannon on my Link Karibo during uh, during its effect triggering happened that I just that I discussed earlier. Tries to Widow Anchor one of my dudes. I have Guard Dragon for it, the Widow Anchor, so that doesn't resolve. And then um, and then something had to do with uh, I think called by the grave on um, Ray that was in his grave. He chained his Ray, and then I Herald of Orange Lighted the one on the field, so he had no stuff. 
Uh, so it was a very weird interaction, again. Uh, there's a lot of weird interactions that can come up in these matchups that you just have to be able to spot how to utilize like the best result out of them. But basically, that's that's all that really came about that. But So this hand is also weird. This is also just a very like not good hand by any stretch of the imagination, but it does have Soul Charge in it. So I go Shine Ball into Link Spider, into Imduk, into Reaper Dacus. I summon all four things back off Soul Charge, and this play would be fantastic if I did not get Ash Blossomed, but I'm still capable of making plays because of the Soul Charge, so I just go into a, a Firewall, make Nightmare Phoenix to trigger to special uh, the Eva out of my hand, I get the Searches, I get to make Ningusu special Lee out of my hand off Firewall, draw a card, uh, and make Gumblar, get Eva onto the field, uh, and then we're like still capable of Gumblaring for four. Even though he Ashed my uh, Summon Sorceress and my hand already wasn't that good, I still drew a card, Gumblard for four, uh, so that's still all right. That's still okay, but he has Engage to try and break through. He draws Widow Anchor off the Engage's bonus effect, so that's not very good for me. It means he's able to basically break straight through my entire board, Kagari adding back Engage here, and then Widow Anchor taking my Gumblard to punch over my stuff and put me at really low in life, and then he makes just a Nightmare Phoenix just to get things off the field. Now, he doesn't turn it into a Mermaid. I don't think he plays Mermaid in his extra deck. Um, unsure. But so, I'm able to just capitalize on that. Able to banish World Legacy World Chalice for Succession, and then bring back Firewall under the Phoenix, and then just start making plays from here. Tribute summoning for my World Legacy World Chalice, uh, sending it to Grave for my Lee to add back, and the special summon two Guard Dragons from my deck. I'm just capable of doing a lot of stuff. And the Exodius was in my Grave because it got discarded off Gumblar. So I was able to add that back off Firewall, adding back two. And I'm capable of just doing a lot of stuff, so my opponent doesn't have anything to mess with me here because the I'm playing the engage for another card, right? To search, he only drew Hornet drones off of it, and he's not really doing anything with that. Basically, it's it's really it's really bad. It's a bad way for me to explain it, but like my opponent also, I have to say, my opponent is probably not also playing the best that he could be playing because he's not used to this software. He's used to being able to, you know think out things in a much longer time frame when we're playtesting, but unfortunately Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro has that timer, that two minute timer, so it makes him have to play a little bit quicker. Uh, so we're like not able to discuss things nearly as much as we would want to, because the way we normally playtest is we get on Dueling Book, get on Discord, and we talk plays out between one another, and we spend a lot of time discussing whether or not something is correct or not. Um, but unfortunately that's just not the case that we're capable of doing here, but so I'm going second. Uh, my opponent apparently going uh, apparently going second against me uh, in the side of games last match did not work out in his favor. He's testing different avenues of how to do things, and he decided to side for going first. Went first, opened Shizuku, uh, got an engage, did a multi role play, got a Widow Anchor. I normal summon Venus in the Shizuku zone because I have Guard Dragon in hand. He goes to Widow Anchor it. I go to Guard Dragon it. He has called by the Grave for the Guard Dragon. Sucks to suck if you're me, but uh, <laughs> whatever. Luckily, he's not able to capitalize and like kill me. He puts the Venus back into my deck, though, because he knows that I play, like, Monster Reborn Soul Charge, and I could have, like, War Legacy Succession and stuff to, like, try and bring it back, so he wants the Venus just out of the way, and even if I could make, like, a Firewall and bounce it, he wants it out of the way. But so I'm capable of just summoning Undyne, that baits an Ash, because he, he knows that I'm going to get Controller and try to special it, so he just wants me to, he wants to put me on possibly not having a Vanilla in my hand, because he knows how this play plays out, but fortunately for me, I have the Shine Ball, so I'm able to try and use Link Spider, he Widow Anchors that, and then I just go into Nightmare Phoenix, pop a back row, and then I have the Soul Charge to re-establish, and I'm capable of getting the Venus out of my deck off Summon Sorceress, and then starting to go ham with what I have, have you know, accessibility into. I'm under Soul Charge, so I can't kill him this turn, but I am capable of going into Ningirsu to basically clear his entire board, at least, or at least try to, right? I'm capable of doing a lot of different things, with, uh, with what the cards I have, because I'm able to Orm, bring back uh, Ningirsu. I knew which cards are set off the multi-roll. He doesn't have Engage set anymore because he used it. Um, he has Typhoon for his field spell, which he has to use, uh, and then gets Ray, and then Kagari can only add back multi-roll because the only two spells left in his grave at this point are multi-roll and Area Zero because his Widow Anchor, his Hornet Drones, and his Engage all got banished from the multi-roll resetting them. So it was one of those things where, like, just because his opening was pretty weak, I was capable of capitalizing on it with, you know, some choice Nightmare Phoenix work, some choice Ningirsu hits, and uh, the Soul Charge basically being the universal equalizer in my favor. 
of, uh, of just making it to where all the resources that I'm throwing into like these things to try and bait cards no longer matter, which is one of those reasons why I'm, I'm really surprised that Soul Charge has stayed in the game nearly as long as it has. I mean, the card was printed in 2014, it was at 3 for only 6 months, and then the card went to 1, but it's been just a really sacky one of ever since, so not really much can be, uh, can be done about it other than just uh, hope that one day it's no longer in the game, or that it becomes something that goes up in quantities so that people can actually respect it. Because it's one of those things where, like, if my opponent's playing a combo deck, I'm going to play as if they do not have Soul Charge because it is a one-of that is not searchable by cards in their deck. But if they have it, then I'm just going to feel like I got jabated and that I got God. But anyway, those were the games for this video. Like I said, there might have been some misplays. There might have been some uh, improper plays there, but it's whatever. It's literally just a large testing size. There's bound to be mistakes, and no matter whatever, no matter what you do, and no matter what anyone does, if you're doing, a, if you're playing a lot of games on an unfamiliar platform, you're bound to make a couple of mistakes. But it's whatever. The main point and the main gist of the video still stands, and that is to test the matchups of these decks versus meta decks. So if you're interested in seeing more, then subscribe to the channel. If you want to see more videos like this, like the video. If you want to see more things like this, because that'll let me know you guys want to see more of them, because you're liking the videos, obviously. And if you have a suggestion or a positive comment, feel free to leave that in the comments down below as well. But if you want to catch my live streams that happen semi-frequently, usually about three times a week, head on over to the Twitch link that is in the description down below. Give the channel a follow, and you'll be notified next time I go live through that, hopefully. But if you also want to go join my channel's per, uh, per, la, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, channel's private Discord server, that one, the Discord server for my channel, where I also announce when I'm streaming and I also chat and uh, on a daily basis. There's a lot of people that like to offer deck help, deck assistance, and stuff like that, including myself. Um, if you're interested in that, then there's a link to that in the description down below as well. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for your time as usual, and take care. I'll see you in the next video.